This conference will now be recorded. Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Claire Bartlett. I'm the USTA Southern TSR for Tennessee, and you're watching Me and My Racket. It's a show about tennis industry professionals sharing their passion, purpose, and connecting over the sport we all know and love. And today on the show, we have Amy Klinska. Amy, how's it going? How you doing? Yeah, good, good, thanks. Um, I want to read a quick bio here for you, so for our viewers and listeners, Amy is the community coordinator for the Greater Knoxville Tennis Association. She manages the Farragut Middle School Junior Team Tennis Program, and this is her eighth season, as well as the Farragut High School Kids in Knox County on the high school team. And Amy is a board member um, on the Knoxville Challenger and serves on the USTA Tennessee Outreach Committee and volunteers her time in many different ways, which we'll get into more later in the interview. In addition to her service, she's a parent of two daughters that are also tournament players, and she plays herself. Amy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. How's everything been going? No, it's been a healthy time, to say the least. <laughs> I mean, uh, we're, we're, you know, trudging along like everybody else and staying positive, hoping this all comes to a conclusion soon. Not sure how soon that will be, but hoping. Yes. Yep. That's um, all we can do right now, really, because <laughs> things are changing by the day, you know, with the news and like school decisions and everything. It's kind of it's a good time to learn to be flexible because that's exactly. <laughs> well, I want to get into a little bit of your, you know, your tennis background, how you first got started um, and, you know, how you first got involved in everything and up to where you are now. So you can talk a little okay. bit about that. Well, my oldest daughter started playing when she was about five years old, and she was taking clinics and a couple of private lessons here and there, and then she started, you know, playing tournaments, and then her sister, who's three years behind her, started playing when she was five, and so we're yeah. going to be able to play on vacations together. Um, my oldest was starting to play in some tournaments. I wanted to be able to warm her up, and so I thought, well, maybe I'll take a clinic. So yeah. I took a clinic. And then I became really addicted to tennis and started playing about five times a week. I would take clinics and you know, just any chance I could to play. Um, yeah. Really, really got into it, loved it. And so then after I'd taken clinic for a while, um, the coach of that clinic talked me into being a captain of a 2-5 team. Mm -hmm. So I did that and loved it, loved my team. It was a great first team, such nice ladies. And um, then I got bumped to 3-0 and played, and I think maybe I would have gotten bumped to 3-5, but I just sort of didn't play enough matches that season. And, um, but then I started taking cardio tennis and got pretty into cardio tennis. That's like my favorite kind of thing. I would play it. Cardio is great. <laughs> and I to do that, so I just love it. So did that a lot. But and then I just got really busy with my girls and all their extracurricular activities. I've always been really involved in their schools and different things they were doing. And then kind of got the community coordinator position. And one thing led to another. And I'm not playing tennis as much as I'd like to right now. But I'm You're thinking. You're learning tennis. <laughs> yeah. I'm less busy and I can get back into it. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. I do is about tennis, but actually playing. Yeah. Is what I right now. Yeah, for sure. Well, so, you know, with what you do now, you know, you promote a lot of free events. You work with UTK with the Little Smokies and, um, you know, you're you're just always um, around, like we said, just promoting tennis. And, and I was just wondering, you know, what you find like motivates you and, and what you feel is like so rewarding about it, about what you do. Well, I just love all the different opportunities that this position has brought me. I work with all different kinds of people, you know, as you mentioned with the University of Tennessee and some of their free 12 and under clinics. And that's, um, I work with Alex Nojeda, the ladies head coach on a few things. And so that's been great. And that's such a great energetic atmosphere. But then, you know, it's a whole other atmosphere when I go in and teach tennis uh, to elementary kids during their right. PE lessons. That's like a whole different thing too. And I love that too. Um, yeah. Working with new parents to tennis who are trying to navigate their way. Um, through their child's tennis, do we get clinics or private lessons? How do we do all this? So, I mean, I just met so many different people, and every in tennis environment can be so different, and, and I love the variety of it. I do. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Well, and like you said, you get to be around, like, so many people and meet so many people on different, like, walks of life and stuff. It's really, really cool. <laughs> yes, I love it. Yeah. 
Well, so in another program, um, you know, Serve and Return, you, you've been spearheading that, and um, recently you've had, you know, really fantastic success. So talk a little bit about, like, that program and, and you know, how it got started and then, you know, where it is now and what's been going on recently. Okay. Well, um, Serve and Return is a GKTA outreach program, and my partner on that is Elizabeth Henderson, and she is um, the head of the USTA Tennessee Outreach Committee, and she's the chair of the Tennessee Tennessee. Ten Ten Tennessee Tennis Patrons Foundation, and she's so great to work with. And in 2018, we decided that we would try to do something with the JTT kids, the summer JTT kids, and something where they are giving back. So we came up with this. We actually, we were benefiting three um, charities that year. It was Second Harvest Food Bank of East Tennessee and um, Raw McDonald House and yeah. Costco. And so we had all the JTT kids, and they were bringing things in and donating, and we did great that year, and it was wonderful. And then in 2019, we decided that we would sort of just focus on Second Harvest Food Bank exclusively. We had spent some time with them and saw what they were doing with their um, Food for Kids program, which is a, where kids take home a backpack of food on weekends, holidays, and then they have a school pantries program set up where um, disadvantaged families can go in and shop. Grocery yeah. shop really, really neat. Um, so we decided to focus exclusively on that. And um, so we kind of made a contest competitive between the JTT team and, you know, on club. So you would give to your club um, physically and online to bring in donations. And yeah. we, did, we collected um, enough that was the equivalent of 4,428 meals. And so we were like, this is great. Let's, let's keep going. Let's do it this year. So we always do it the month of end in July. In January, um, Elizabeth and I had said, you know what, let's just make this a virtual food drive. I mean, not knowing that COVID was coming up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're such a sort of a virtual society anyway. Let's, let's make this happen this way. And yeah. we did it being a great move because of COVID. Um, so we sort of just moved to the Knoxville tennis community at large. Let's get everybody to give. Let's not just make it a competition between JTT um, yeah. teams. So it was, you know, all the clubs in Knoxville, and they really came through. We collected 21,322 meals. Um, and I think that Peninsula Club was the winner this year. I, they were the winner last year, too. Yeah. They were the winner this year. And, um, but, I mean, made me really proud to be part of this Knoxville tennis community. They really, really, they really brought it. And yeah. um, I think the, um, we're so acutely aware of the need right now. There are so many people who are struggling and out of jobs. And, you know, um, I mean, I know I, from myself, I know I take for granted, you know, food and the fact that, you know, it's always there and accessible to me. But there are people out there making decisions on whether to feed their kids or pay their electric bill. And um, yeah. Lorena Hubbard, who is my contact at Second Harvest, um, I went in and and it's, it's amazing what they do and it really she really opened my eyes to what that what that struggle is that daily struggle for people so I'm really proud of, of what we did this year yeah well that's awesome to hear and all the best you know for continuing and keeping it going yes. great. Thank you. yeah well so you're also um, a board member on the Knoxville Challenger tournament and everything going on there so talk a little bit about that like you know being involved with such a big tournament and like what all that time looks like and all that planning. Well <laughs> I started that because my daughter my oldest my oldest daughter she started being a ball kid when she was about 10. Yeah. And I would go with such great tennis to watch and um, Trudy Evans who uh, probably a lot of your watchers know who she is. She um organizing all the ball kids at the time. So I would go and she talked me into coming and helping and being a ball person. And so I would do that for a while and just help her any way that I could. And so now my daughter's graduated from high school and she did her last challenger last year. And yeah. um so Trudy asked me one day, hey, would you like to be on the board? And yeah. so last year was my first year to do that. And I don't know much how much I actually helped them, but it's um it's a such a great group of people. Um, they're they're wonderful to work with. Um, Howard Blum and all the people at Helen Austin Nav are so great. So um, it's been great being a part of that committee. And you know, I think this year will look a little bit different, but we're just, you know, hoping to see that through the end for sure. Yeah, of course, of course. 
Well, as you mentioned, you're a tennis parent, and um, I just wanted to get your perspective on all this. You know, as a tennis parent, you have two girls that play and play tournaments, and so what is it like being a tennis parent? And then second, what is it like being a tennis parent during COVID-19 and everything? Oh, well, I probably the joy of my life is watching my girls play tennis, and I have two girls. One is really competitive, and she's a tournament player, and she, I mean, she's all out um and the other child the younger child she loves tennis too and she plays really hard but i think she's more of a social tennis player yeah she's like, hmm, who's going to be at clinic tonight and who's yeah. Gonna be well, that's great. yeah and i don't mind that i just want them to play so i love that she's that way too so that's great so i kind of got one of each but gosh i have um it's been great we had so many great experiences um going to tournaments and being on jtt teams and uh, you know, we've made, as uh, parents, we've made so many good friends and had so many good times. So, um, you know, it's hard sometimes. Win or lose, I love to watch them. Of course, winning's a lot more fun. Uh -huh. um, just love seeing them out there. And it's yeah. been great from a physical standpoint, a mental standpoint. I mean, tennis all around has been so great for my girls. And I'm yeah. really, really thankful for it. Yeah. What is something, you know, you can do as a family, like you said, like you got into it because you're going to be able to hit with them. And, um, oh, yeah. Every vacation we're playing and, you know, um, badminton on the driveway at night. <laughs> Not tennis, yeah. but yeah. still rest our hand. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a great family activity, too. Yeah. yeah awesome. <laughs> Well, now, um, not many people probably know this. Maybe, maybe they do. We'll, we'll see. But um, you were at a theater production company. Um, you were the director of group sales and marketing um, for them in Chicago um, before you moved to Knoxville. And I just, when we talked about that, like offline, you know, way way back when we met, I thought it was so interesting because there's so many like different parallels, you know, like with with that job and like what you do now. So, what did like what were some skills you learned like from the theater environment and all that? And then what you know have you taken to you utilize now and what you do now well i think probably that was such a fun experience first of all i mean i worked for this big italian family owned the business and it was such a diverse group of people that i worked with i mostly sold the corporations and so um, i talked to corporate people during the day and i had all this interaction with the cast it was a really big cast and so a lot of interaction with them and um i mean it was just so valuable because i learned to adapt you know, I had yeah. to put a different hat when I talked to the corporate people and then a different hat when I talked and worked right. at the cat because they're so free spirited and, you yeah. know, um, fun, yeah. and, you know, different types of conversations. So I think that job really taught me to be adaptable. You know, um, you want to talk to everyone with, with the same respect, the same um, value for what they're saying, but the way you uh, interact with the corporate people was probably different than the way I interact with the cast. You know, yeah. same thing here. I mean, I put on a different hat when I go into elementary PE classes and teach tennis. Right. Yeah. And, and so I think uh, part of what was so valuable about that job and what I learned there has helped me so much. Yeah. As a communicator. And um, yeah, very different jobs, but very um, similar ways in doing them. Oh, yeah. So I, that was a good experience for me. Yeah. It was. And, and, Chicago. I was much younger, so it was uh, fun to live in the city. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Well, and like you said, like, it's just, you know, different people have different motivations and, like, roles, you know, so you've got to have that, like, when you're talking to people in the back of your head, you know, because different things, like, come to different people, so that that's that's awesome. That you got that there. Um, <laughs> Well, so to switch gears a little bit, do you have any advice, you know, or suggestions um, for any people looking to get involved, like, you know, maybe being a coordinator or like, you know, volunteering with a CTA? Um, like what, what advice or like best practices do you have? Well, I mean, I think um, it's, it's, you know, there are so many ways to volunteer. I mean, GKTA is always looking for volunteers when we host turn USTA tournaments here in Knoxville. There's, you know, you can volunteer there. I always encourage my high school kids, you know, come and volunteer with me at the Little Smokies or since GKT has, you know, play days or carnivals that are open to the city. And I always try to get my high school kids there. But I mean, I would just tell people to it's just it's just rewarding. I mean, anytime you can give back, uh, give your time, your efforts. I mean, it's it's really rewarding. And there's so many ways you can get involved with tennis. Probably the, the most fun I ever had volunteering in tennis were when my girls were playing red ball. 
and we would go out and they would have little matches and they would ask parents to go out and help them keep score and help them know where, you know, be sure you're standing in the right place and everything. And to me, and those were great memories. But yeah. even that hearing, I mean, that was a that's a big help when parents do that for, for clubs yeah. that finish yeah. or you know, take the scorecard to JTT um, summer. And I asked a lot of my middle school parents for my middle school teams. I had about twelve teams last year and really I need a parent on every team um, yeah. to volunteer. And um, some don't know tennis, so mm -hmm. I have to train. Um, yeah. Some they don't know how to score. They've never played before. They don't know anything. So, you know, I train them, and I think some are reluctant to do it. I kind of have to be a little bit push. They don't really need that, but they do it, and they're so great because I can't be at twelve matches a week. Um, keep you know keeping the score and running the matches. So they do it, but I think it helps them also bond with their player. You yeah. know, when they understand, it helps them understand the game, and when they can understand the game and what their child's doing on court, that's right. a very good conversation to have with your child when the match is over, versus yeah. not having any idea what your child just did on court. You just know they won or lost. Right. So I think the parents that do that um, really get a lot out of it. Yeah, but I I sure do appreciate them. Oh yeah. Well, and just like you said, just understanding and having some more empathy because it's not easy being out there like all alone and you know. And it's not. It's not. It's the game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Well, yeah. Well, so do you have any mentors or people that have really made an impact, you know, to you in your tennis tennis life and journey? Well, I have to say the my biggest mentor is probably Deidre Dunn. I know you know Deidre. A lot of people know Deidre. She is the GKTA president and she is the uh, city tennis director for Knoxville. But she has seen and done everything in uh, Knoxville tennis wise. And um, she's got a great work ethic, as you know. Um, so she has just taught me so much. I mean, if she will always, you know, be honest with me and tell you if I have an idea, you know, yeah. something new. I mean, I can always count on Deidre to be really upfront and honest with me, like, yeah, that's great, or that's not going to work, and here's why. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have learned so much from her and have a great relationship with her. I really appreciate her. And I'll say the other person is probably Rusty Morris. Rusty. Uh, yeah. um, he's another go-to person for me when I have a tennis question, especially when it comes to middle school or high school tennis. He said, you know, so many teams and he just um I can always go to Rusty and know I'm gonna get the right answer or or learn the right way to do something. I mean I've been doing the middle school thing for eight years, but still there's it's amazing that you've done it for so long. Something always comes up. Right. Yeah, it's it's always something. <laughs> yeah. He's been really nice to me. Yeah. Well great. Well good deal. Well um what do you like to do when you're not around tennis? I know you're around <laughs> a lot but what do you like to do you know in your free time or any, any interests or hobbies uh well you know i don't have any really hardcore hobbies i'm really involved in my girls school and they're they both are in musical theater well, i have one that just graduated so she was in musical theater my sophomore is musical theater so i'm on the theater board at school and i do a lot of them but really as you know i've got a freshman in college and a sophomore in high school really i just spend as much time with family as i can i mean when high school hits, you're thinking, wow, I don't have that much time left yeah. <laughs> in my house. So we just yeah. spend a ton of family time together. I mean, hardcore hobbies. I really have a lot of real hardcore hobbies. I'm hoping maybe later in life. Yeah. Some, some real hobbies. I don't know. We've watched a lot of, uh, my youngest daughter and I have watched a lot of House during the oh, season. Yeah. A lot of house. We've been watching that, but I think it was just sort of pandemic driven. Like she watched one episode, of, yeah. So I don't think that's a hobby, but that's how we've been spending some time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is that the first time you're watching it through? Or? I've never seen it before. She saw one episode on uh, Amazon Prime. She's like, you've got to watch this. And I'm not necessarily a medical show person. Yeah. Um, but I did because she wanted me to. Like, well, yeah. I'm not going to say that to her. So we right. sat down and watched it, and then I got completely hooked. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, we we I cannot wait to sit down and watch the next episode. <laughs> oh, you're so good. <laughs> That's funny because I'm not. What'd you say? 
he's so salty and he's just so <laughs> <laughs> I know because I'm not really a medical person either, but then when I started watching the show, I was like, Oh, I see. Like this is more, you know, there's a lot more to it than like just the, you know, next case or who's gonna come in the hospital. So watch it when it was on way back when or are you watching it now? Oh, I'm watching it now. Yeah, I'm still like I'm in season three. Like I, I have a ways to go. So yeah. <laughs> we're just gonna see okay. 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 So. Oh, yeah, so we're close. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, well, so what are you looking forward to in the future? You know, with everything we've got, we're dealing with. You know. Um, you know, I think I'm really just looking forward to normalcy. Just yeah. To normal, I think that's probably just everybody. Yeah. You know, um, I will say that like the lockdown afforded us some really good family time that we would have not otherwise had, um, especially before you know your child enters college. I mean, I would have never had all that time together with all of us in the same house. So, yeah. I mean, um, but you, it, it's. That was the silver lining. I know there's so many people out there um, who've had illness and death, and that's just so sad. So I guess, I mean, really, I just would love to see us get back to a normal way of life. Yeah. Um, we, and like I said, we had a we had a full GKT, GKTA calendar full of great events and some new things, and and so that just kind of got wiped away for a while. So I'm really looking forward to picking that back up and getting going on all those new things we had. We yeah. had planned. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Yeah. Well, is there anything you'd like to promote, like any projects or anything you're working on as of late? Well, right now, now that server return is over, um, I am working on middle school tennis. And we have GKTA here in Knoxville. We have an elementary, a middle school, and a high school league. And so um, they're not, they're just USTA leagues. They're not school sanctioned or anything. Anyway. So uh, right now, I'm just working on getting middle school players and all yeah. high school players and trying to um, you know get our local schools here involved in all those leagues and that's a lot of kids um, so I'm pretty much on the phone all day every day yeah, <laughs> I yeah. love all the but it's a nice break from the phone um, mm -hmm. uh, really just just working with all those parents and like I said yeah. we're getting a lot of new parents this year so it's a lot of explaining and a lot of uh, how the league goes and how matches and practices and things like that go but it's right. great everybody Nice. I think everybody's so glad to have something different to do. Yeah, oh, I'm so, sure. yeah. <laughs> so I what and we are in Knox County, you can either go virtual for learning this year or in person, and about thirty percent of our kids are going virtual. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting phone calls from a lot of parents whose child will be learning virtually and yeah. they're looking for something for them to do. They want to give them some socialization, they want to give them some fitness and yeah. If you're staying at home and you're really weighing your risks, t as we know, tennis is low. So it's like a two on a scale of your risk. Yeah. So it's very appealing to a lot of those parents. So, you know, we have a division in all in, um, the elementary and the middle school where you can play having never picked up a racket before, which is so great. And so it gives yeah. kids who've never thought of tennis, the parents, you know, see the signs or whatever, and they call me and so you got new tennis to play or so my goal is to really make it super fun for those kids yeah. and so hopefully they'll get hooked into the tennis the way that I got hooked when I started oh yeah yeah well that's great it's great to hear well um well thanks so much Amy for coming on the show I really enjoyed talking with you and learning oh, it was so fun, Claire. thanks for asking me yeah of course and thank you to our listeners and viewers thanks for tuning in you all if you're on youtube you can uh, click subscribe down below and uh, do the little notification bell so you get notified of new content we're also on facebook and instagram and twitter all the socials and um you can find us on spotify and apple Podcasts now too so check us out there all right hope everybody has a great day and we will see you all later bye, bye.